Hi everyone, I'm Adam from KWRI. Today we'll be talking about the technique used by the Kentucky Watershed Watch Volunteers to determine the number of E. coli and coliform colonies in a water sample using the RCAR test method from Roth Biosciences. By the end of this video, you'll have all the information you need in order to collect a water sample and determine the E. coli concentration for that water sample using the RCAR test method. But before we go out, let's talk about the supplies we need to bring with us. The first item on our checklist is gloves. Gloves should be worn to prevent the sample in our R card from being contaminated by substances or microorganisms on the hands of the person collecting the sample. This is important for maintaining the sample's integrity and ensuring that the results of the test are accurate. Next, you'll want to pack multiple 1 milliliter pipettes. These are used to transfer the water from our source to the R cards. You want to bring extras in case of loss or contamination. Please remember that the sample volume required will vary based on the test method that is used. You'll also want to pack three R cards. These R cards are designed for the rapid detection of E. coli and coliforms. For quality control, we use three R cards at each site which allows us to obtain an average result to improve the accuracy and reliability of our test, we recommend that you pre-label your cards with the date and site ID. For example, our site is named site number one. So for the site label, we use the alphanumeric labels site 1A, 1B, and 1C to distinguish between the samples collected at that location. The next checklist item we want to include is our Watershed Watch R-Card data sheet and sample SOP document. As we did with our R-Cards, by pre-labeling some of the information first, we can reduce the number of things we have to do in the field. For meteorological data, we recommend using a Kentucky Mesonet Kokoros or ASOS station that is located near your site. As you look over your data sheet, you'll see a section for the R-Card method. We'll discuss this in more detail later, but this is where you'll fill in the results from your card. Another item that you should include is a sealable container and a Ziploc bag to securely store the R cards. The container serves as a sterile environment to store the cards before and after sampling. It protects the cards from external contaminants and potential damage during transport. One other important item to include is something to write with, like a pen or Sharpie. Lastly, we advise that you bring a clipboard or a box because the R-card procedure requires a flat level surface for an even distribution of the sample between the top and bottom pieces of the card. Before we go out to our sampling location, we want to set the incubator to 35 degrees Celsius so that it can be ready for us when we return from the field. So now that we've packed our supplies, let's go collect a sample. In this section of the video, we'll provide a tutorial for sample collection and inoculation. Before we begin, we want to put on gloves and place our R cards on a flat level surface. For the first step, carefully unwrap a sterile pipette from the bulb end. Remember, do not touch the tip of the pipette and never use a pipette that's been previously unwrapped. Next, you'll want to enter downstream of your sampling location to avoid suspending sediment within the sample collection area. As you begin to collect your sample, you'll want to squeeze the pipette bulb and insert the tip two or three inches below the water surface, being careful not to touch the stream bed, then slowly release the bulb to draw water into the pipette. Expel excess water until you reach the desired one milliliter sample volume, which is indicated by a small raised line near the bulb. Now we will inoculate the R card. Carefully lift the plastic from the bottom corner and dispense the one milliliter sample onto the center of the card by squeezing the bulb. Next, let the plastic film drop back onto the card and the liquid will disperse evenly. After about one to two minutes, the formulation on the film will gel, allowing you to place the R card in the Ziploc bag for transport. You'll want to repeat the entire procedure twice so that all three cards are inoculated. Now that we've collected all the samples, we need to incubate the inoculated cards. Before placing the cards into the incubator, we want to validate the digital readout of the temperature on the device is accurate and maintaining a temperature between 35 and 38 degrees Celsius. To do that, we use a secondary thermometer to perform a check. If the R cards aren't kept at an optimal temperature, E. coli colony growth will be slow and some mortality may occur, allowing other species of bacteria to be favored. After about a minute, the temperature on the thermometer should have equilibrated, and now we can remove it to check our reading. Since our device and thermometer are reading 35 degrees Celsius, we can now proceed to place the R cards into the incubator. 
You should plan to put the R cards in the incubator within three hours of sampling and incubate the cards for 20 to 24 hours before counting. You can stack up to 15 cards in one cycle and always make sure to record the incubation start and end times on your data sheet. Once 20 to 24 hours has elapsed, you can pull the cards for counting. Now we will discuss the procedure for enumerating or counting our E. coli colonies. After the appropriate incubation time, dark blue dots will appear showing E. coli colonies. Likewise, dark pink or red colonies will appear showing coliform colonies. To enumerate, you just simply count the number of dots for each type. So for our card, you'll notice that we have 20 distinct colonies. After counting the colonies, we can record our data in our data sheet for our first sample. To extrapolate the number of colonies present in a 100 milliliter sample, you divide the count by the sample volume, then multiply by 100, giving us an E. coli concentration of 2,000 colony forming units. Next, we want to enumerate the other cards and calculate the average E. coli concentration for our stream. After summing our totals and taking the average, we ended up with an E. coli concentration of 2,000 colony forming units, which is much higher than the Kentucky E. coli limit for surface waters. In instances where the colonies are numerous, you'll want to employ techniques to make the enumeration more efficient and accurate. For example, use a row or column counting method to count all of the cells for a particular row or column and record the row or column total on the side of the card then, when all the cells have been counted, sum the totals to get the E. coli concentration. As an alternative, the Kentucky Water Research Institute has developed a model to count the distinct colonies on the R cards. They will soon release the mobile application for use. The application allows you to upload photos of your R cards and generate a report with the counts and averages. So please take photos of your cards so they can be used for verification by others and as training data to improve the model. After enumerating the cards, you'll want to dispose of them because they are a biological hazard. To do this, simply put the R cards in a microwave steaming bag and heat them in a microwave for four to five minutes. This procedure will inactivate or kill any potentially dangerous microbes.